We want to welcome you to our first podcast called Crooked Courage. We are really excited about it. And we are glad today that our first guest is Jade Mays. Yay! <laughs> Yay! So, back in March, when COVID first came out, we were one of the first churches to say, hey, we're going to close down. So we closed down a week before all or a lot of the other churches joined us. And so we started doing Facebook Live. And that's that was really hard for the church because we're used to hugging people. You know, we're used to embracing. We're used to singing happy birthday. <clears throat> we're used to singing hymns together and just really being present. Um, we were told uh, by our uh, governor and by our mayor that in a couple of weeks we would return back. And then this thing has continued and we found a new normal. And so what you guys have been experiencing is you've often watched us on Facebook Live. It's been a while since we've been together and we have people that help us put together a dynamic service and Jade has been one of those people. So we want you today to get a chance to meet Jade and to know her a little bit more personally. So welcome to Cricket Space. And so I have Jade Mays with me. She is um, a person who has a really good sense of humor. Oh, She's you. one of the few people <laughs> that laughs at my jokes when I'm preaching. And she's an artist, and we're going to learn more about her artistry later. And she is the proud parent of two dogs. Yes. So <laughs> we welcome Jade Mays to Crooked Courage. Did I say Crooked Courage earlier? You did. I hope so. Yes. We, we welcome Jade Mays to Crooked Courage. So, Jay, um, why don't you tell us first your, about your full name? That's an interesting name. That, you know, were you born with it? How were you gifted with Oh, that that's, name? So, that's a good question. No, I was not born with that <laughs> name. <laughs> um, so when I was born a Heather mm -hmm. back in the day, and I never, I never took to that. Mm -hmm. And I was um, given the last name, um, it, the last name I was given was not my father's last name, it mm -hmm. was Jacobs. And so I was Heather Jacobs. Uh -huh. for wow. a <laughs> like Harriet. <laughs> yeah, the, most of my life. And I, I, I was so disconnected from my first name, I almost didn't answer when people would call me that. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty, um, pretty interesting. And um, so Maze is my father, my uh, biological father's last name so I just took that um, mm -hmm. when I was you know when mm -hmm. I was able to do that legally and my nickname was Jade um, and so I eventually just took that legally and it was because of my attitude at the time <laughs> <laughs> say more <laughs> well I was a, yes I was considered to be kind of a jaded young woman when I was younger uh -huh. I, I, I had a um, what do you want to call it I just, I, 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 I didn't think very well of people, you know, mm -hmm. and I didn't uh, believe in systems, large systems, when I was, be at schools or, or churches or work bureaucracy. I had a bit of a, mm -hmm. a bit of an attitude, though. <laughs> so, well, so Jade Mays is actually a name you gifted yourself. Yes. Yes, and then Jade. Now um, I like it. I like it because of the elements of the stone. I think it's really mm -hmm. kind of a cool. Mm -hmm. uh, I look at it that way now. I, I have. I still have an attitude, but not nearly as bad. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Well, that is really interesting to hear. Um, I was watching this TV show, and the people on the show. No, I was watching a podcast, and the people on the show introduced themselves as the daughter of. So, like for example, I would say, "I'm the daughter." of Herman Hill. I'm the daughter of Dorothy Hill. Um, a little bit some days I might even think I'm the daughter of Sojourner Truth. If you were to claim yourself as the daughter of someone, who would you say you're the daughter of? Well, that's really interesting. So I never met my father um, and I never I, not, I never saw a picture of him. I think I might have found a picture of him on Ancestry.com, but I'm still not sure. It's nebulous. Um, so I definitely feel like I'm the daughter of God, for mm -hmm. sure. And I am definitely the daughter of my mother. I'm my mother's child, Mary Jane Riley. <laughs> okay. For sure. Okay. So what do you do for fun and relaxation? People get to see you sing and they get to experience that. But what do you do when you're, when you're not performing? Hmm. Um, I like silence a lot. I, so I think I'm probably a really boring person. And <laughs> no. <laughs> 
I think so. I love my dogs, Bella and Leonardo, Lenny for short. And I like to walk them, and uh, I like I like to write a lot. Um, and so whenever I have downtime, I I absolutely like to not talk, mm -hmm. and I like to write, and I like to just walk my dogs. And if I was in a, a hilly place, I'd be a, a hiker, an mm -hmm. avid hiker. I, mm -hmm. I have been in the past. Um, and a, and the ocean is uh, I call it the keeper of my soul. So. Wow, wow, wow. I like silence too. Often when people ask me what's my favorite music, I say silence. And people will laugh and say, that's not music. And I'm like, yes, it is. <laughs> I like silence. So I can appreciate someone that really uh, enjoys silence. Uh, let me see what other questions we have for you today. Okay. Right. <laughs> um, if you were going to give a book title that describes your life, what might that be? Oh, a book title that describes my life. Um, well, <laughs> see which way you lean. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I just think uh, Forge Ahead okay. would be it. You know what I mean? I mean, I, my book is Walk Until Sunrise, but that walking part is the way I live my life. I, it's just keep moving. <laughs> okay. um, I know a lot of people who have gotten the urge to write a book and in my lifetime, a few of my friends have published uh, books. Uh, and so you did that and uh, it was a really, really good book. Um, so I'm curious, why did you write a memoir? It, uh, it's, chose to be written written i i did not like say i'm gonna sit down and write this every time i tried to so back in 1998 i'll try to be really brief mm -hmm. <laughs> i got i got very uh kind of disheartened with the music scene um i was singing probably 20 nights out of a month you know like a lot uh three to four hour gigs uh all over in all different kind of venues and um i got i didn't like uh, singing in those environments on a regular basis back then. I don't know what they're like now, but back then uh, it was depressing to me because people were behaving badly. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you'd go one night and see the guy with his wife, the next night you'd see the guy with one other person, this other, just a lot of stuff going on, alcohol, drugs, it was just... Uh, then you're trying to sing and uh, I do like silence and I needed the space to make the music in and everybody's talking through it, you know, just didn't like it. So I decided <laughs> I'm quitting singing. I was just very dramatic, always have been my whole life. <laughs> so like, I quit. And so the very next day I woke up and it's like, you must write the book, you know. And so that was in 1998. So I started writing stuff and then it hurt too much to write. So I put it back down. Mm -hmm. And then I was just kind of at a loss, like, what am I going to do, you know? Um, so over time, I would keep, uh, it would keep popping back out at me and I'd put it down. So it took a long time just simply because I kept rejecting the idea of writing the book. And then I think after many years of therapy and uh, writing songs that were very healing for me, um, I was finally clear to actually write the book, um, you know, as it ought to be written, like not from a, a deeply emotional but more of an observant point of view and mm -hmm. it then it was a joy to write the book it was great so um so it, i was i was literally knocked on like write the book write the book you can't do anything else unless you write the book everything else will fail unless you write the book it was very it was very um like my whole time with god has been like that it's like mm -hmm. it's just do this you know so that's why <laughs> wow. Wow. Got a whole bunch more coming. <laughs> so, more books? Yes, because I realized I, it's just like clear, just clear everything out, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, because a lot of people have stuff that they don't talk about that's intense like that. There's a lot more than you think. You know what I mean? Well, not you. You would know because you're a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But what a lot of people are carrying a lot of burdens and. Um, so even though it's it was a heavy book, a lot of people could relate to that and, and shared parts of the story in their own life. So that made me feel great. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I like to write as well. Um, and one of the things I've learned is writing is a process that you have to really lean into. 
it's not just this easy thing. And I think that's why a lot of people maybe don't tell their stories because you, you not just have to put the words down, but you have to lean into all of that and all that it encompasses and where it takes you. Yes. Sometimes it takes you to spaces that you'd rather forget. So I really appreciate you, you know, kind of leaning in um, to that. Um, so let me look, you know, this is my first time. So. Yeah, that's all right. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I thought that your book was um, wonderfully um, open and honest and that you were very vulnerable. And I don't know if you've listened to Brene Brown, but she talks a lot about vulnerability and that vulnerability allows you to actually uh, connect with other people because once people see you being vulnerable, then it invites them to be kind of vulnerable and let down kind of their pretenses as well. Um, but all of that said, I notice a lot of times with people that are well established, being vulnerable is hard. Mm -hmm. Showing our less than stellar side is hard. How are you able to put such vivid stuff about yourself? Like, it's really some vivid stuff, right? Yes. <laughs> about how are you able to do that? You know, does it shock you some days? You know? No, I think it's, it's an undying naivete. <laughs> in my personality mm -hmm. um, that just believes that the truth is the best thing to tell and you just you should do that especially when I came back from that whole runaway experience I couldn't tell the truth I lied consistently mm -hmm. um, and it, it was awful you know so um, to just the state of truth is is much better it's it's um, yeah it's it's not really accepted society mm -hmm. <laughs> society even mm -hmm. though we you know, the truth sets you free and blah, blah, blah. But it's not, um, however, that's, that's like, I don't really, like in my opinion, I don't have a whole bunch to lose. I just feel like that's one of the things that I've been given as a gift. So go ahead, you know. And tell the truth. Yep. What did, did, what did it do for you to finally, because you talk about the journey and it sounds like it took you years. Yes. Of kind of revisiting, putting down when you finally finished the book, did that do something for you? Was it just a chapter done? Or did something happen for you in completing this book? Um, the, I, I feel like it's, it turned it into my life, that part of my life into art, which is wonderful. And um, so the art, by definition to me, be it musical or writing, whatever it is, isn't art until you share it with other people mm -hmm. for them to react to. And so I think the actual book release party was, I was, I couldn't even sing. I just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I couldn't, I tried. It didn't work out too well. Um, but uh, just that being literally that, like not being able to function and being so supported by everybody who was there, that, that made that, all that writing become real. Like the other part, putting it on the paper and stuff, it actually, um, it, 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 so the two parts of that that really made a difference were actually seeing the physical book for the first time. Mm -hmm. um, literally, to, like taking it out of here and putting it over there. Oops, sorry, I hit the microphone. <laughs> sorry. Mm -hmm. And then, the, then being witnessed at the book release party um, mm -hmm. were, were the two big things that uh, literally was, it was like <laughs> thousands of dollars for the therapy right there. <laughs> That felt good, and it gave me courage. Like I'm, mm -hmm. I'm writing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue writing. Like uh, there's a lot of serial memoirists or whatever. Um, but the next part is a totally different uh, st uh, way of writing because I did journalize heavily my whole mm -hmm. life, so it's mm -hmm. all been written down once. Mm -hmm. So revisiting it is uh, not so painful because it, it already got worked out a little bit. So mm -hmm. it's just, um, it's more. Again, I get to be more of an observer. Yeah, so I was at one book review that you did. Well, actually, I was at yeah. more than one. But one of them I was at, you began singing, and you recalled some memory of your mom. Oh, yeah. And yes. then you began crying. And I wish I have to try to see if I, because I, I recorded that. What was that about, that crying? What, you know? Mm -hmm. It's because uh, she, it was a song she wrote, uh, mm -hmm. and, and it was... It, it was just, I could see her so clearly in my mind. And mm -hmm. uh, she was 
we lived in Ojai, which is a beautiful little valley in California, and it was this run, she was playing this <laughs> out of tune pet piano covered with cobwebs in this little shed, <laughs> like surrounded by these um, fancy pigeons <laughs> that, that she was off. This is, my mother was very eccentric, and so this is, this was, like, so you just watch the fragility of her, not be, realizing she was being witnessed, and her thoughts were so clear in that song, you know, that um, the burden she felt about what life had given her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's the first time I think I really felt for her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned art and that until you share something, it's not art. So I think what I heard you say is that if I'm in my home and I'm getting down and I'm singing, unless I share that with the public, then it is not art. So I really was having this, and I tried to put in the question, this thought about what is art? Remember Toni Morrison in the book Sula um, quoted and said, you know, people without an art form are dangerous. I don't know if you have any thought about that at all, but what is art for you? What is art? It's the best way to express yourself in your feelings um, in, a, in a way that contributes to society and doesn't hurt other people, you know, mm -hmm. unless you have a very strange <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it, and, it, and people are afraid, like they, they'll hear like very angry people like uh, making songs that are full of anger and hate, but it's helping somebody else express their hate and anger in a way that is connecting, not you know, it's not it's not direct violence. I don't know how to say it. So I I I feel like I should be like <laughs> I could be a very mean and violent person <laughs> if I wanted to, and I'd have all the excuses in the world. But the art like it took those took the, those are layers like you're buried under that. So it just removes the layers and shares them in a way. I just think it makes it's the, it's what makes us human. Is is the a form of ex, of self expression that is shared with others. Yeah, I feel you because there's some days I just blast Eminem and mm -hmm. it's like it meets my whatever I'm feeling that struggle of that day just like singing with him. Yes. It's like and I'm not harming anyone and he's expressing all of what I'm feeling in the moment. And so, no, I definitely hear that music is so powerful. And like when I listen to this song and my sermon title is Sunday is I'm a Survivor. Whenever that song comes on, I notice people just move to the dance floor. If you're like in a public space, like people connect with it. Yeah. Like it seems like it's a common theme. Like a lot of us have kind of like survived. So I do hear you in terms of art um, connecting us. Like when you go to the museum and you look at drawings and you stare at them, that yeah. somehow they're connecting, they're conveying something in that piece. So that's pretty powerful, thank you. Well, we've been talking about art, we've been talking about your book. Would you be willing to share something with us? Yeah, I, I thought like, um, so Sundays I come and I come as a servant and that I, I believe you should come to God humble and, and share. Um, I have, I've written a lot of songs about God too, so I wanted to share a little bit of that. Well, I look forward to it. I mean, you know, when you're with us on Sunday, we get a lot of good comments and people give a lot of good feedback. And one of the things I, I, I notice that people say a lot is somehow you make us feel something. Oh, that's you know, awesome. Like they feel spirited um, when you sing. So thank you for sharing your mini gifts with us. Good. All right. So um, I'm, I'm kind of tickled to share just a small snippets of a couple of songs that I've written. Um, I have a lot of songs about God, and I, plan, I have a recording project someday, soon, coming. So this one is called I Surrender, and it's, um, it's, I think it, it, it talks about a lot of the struggle that I had um, with listening to God. So, Lord, you're testing me, giving me a testimony. Lord, you called my name. Now I'll never be. 
and I'm trusting you. You are loving me, and I'm loving you. I praise, I praise. a little piece of that song <laughs> and then here's when I got a more uh, um, calm relationship with God it's called I love the Lord okay so let me see if I remember these chords I love the Lord the Lord loves me snippets for you there. Um, Thanks. If there was something that we didn't know about you, so is, is there something you could share with us that we don't know about you that you'd like us to know about you? Hmm. Now that's a thought-provoking question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why you put it near the end. Yeah. Now, at the beginning, <laughs> okay. you get the person warmed up uh, a little. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Huh. Um, I mean, I'm a pretty straightforward person. I think, uh, let's see. I wish I could surf. <laughs> I would love to know how to surf. Um, let's see. And I, um, I, I am a, I love rock music. Uh -huh. Yeah, probably more than just about any other kind of music. Really, more than jazz. Yeah, jazz is just something that's natural for me, but I love rock music. Okay. okay. <laughs> so. And um, you talked a little bit in the beginning about your dogs, but could you share because that is. Uh, your family. <laughs> yes. Uh, could you share a little bit about what it's been like to be a parent of, yes. and of Bella? Bella and Lenny. Leonardo the long. That's what he gets called when he's in trouble. But Lenny. Yes. And did yes. you name them? Or, you know, how did they come? Um, did you guys become family? So, Bella was named. Um, she, uh, I'll try to be really concise with it. Uh, she was a rescue because um, a guy that I worked with, um, his sister's teenagers, they were left alone for one day when she came home they had a dog <laughs> and they had a, some guy gave him to him on the street but um long story short they didn't take care they didn't walk and they didn't take mm -hmm. it out and all that so mm -hmm. she's like this dog has to go it's going to the shelter the guy saw me he knew my dog had passed recently he's like you're the person for this dog so i eventually ended up with bella who was about four months old when i first found her um and like she she is uh she talk about a hugger and a lover she is a lover of all doesn't matter whether you're an animal or a person, she loves you. Lenny is a tribute to my old dog, who was a big black Russian terrier, is a guard dog, very mean. Mm -hmm. And the only dogs that he got along with were Puggles. So mm -hmm. in honor of him, I, I got a Puggle and mm -hmm. named Lenny. And um, Lenny is like little Lord Lenny, mm -hmm. and he thinks he is in charge of everything. 
and he psyched Bella out to a certain level, even though she's three times his size. <laughs> So Bella drank the Kool-Aid. She drank the Kool-Aid, and uh, but they're they're a joy. And because my other dog was like such a responsibility, because he he was not nice. Um, these two are so friendly. It's just I probably didn't train them as well as I should have because they they're just sweethearts. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of nice not to worry. Like tell everybody stay away from the dog. Don't don't pet him. Don't he will bite you. You know, like with these two, they're just sweetie pies. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well. There's one last question, and this is a question I'm going to ask everybody that comes on our podcast. What is one thing that's on your bucket list to do? Oh, on my bucket list to do, uh, I still haven't made it to Paris. Okay. I want to go there. <laughs> Sounds good. We hope you get to Paris when we have beaten COVID. Yes, yes, yes. And I get to Italy. When we have yes, COVID. and Greece next year for me. <laughs> I was going to go write some short stories there, but next year. Thank you so much, Jay. Yes. Oh, merci. Oui, oui. <laughs>